Welcome to week nine. Explore the Bible through the book of Ecclesiastes. Today's our second week here. We're in this kind of second section of this quarter uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter three, a passage that's very familiar to people. Even if you don't know scripture, you know the songs, right? Um, so, you know, popular music. And so this, this is a passage that's very familiar to so many. Uh, and we're, so we're going to look at this in chapter three today. We're just going to look at the first part of this section about a time for everything, but let's read this. There is an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. And we know he goes on, a time to live, a time to die, a time for everything. There's a season under the sun for everything that God has ordained, right? A time for every activity under heaven. God has this. This is a great passage. I mean, it's a beautiful passage just in, in the way that it's written and, and kind of the beauty of the poetry. But the but the truth of the passage is so important for us to understand that that there is a time for everything that we have to realize that, that uh, things happen in life. Okay, this is a part of life and it's how we go through it. And that things are going to happen even when we don't want them to. And sometimes they're, they're going to happen at times that we think are not um, appropriate or maybe helpful to us, but there is a time for things to happen, that life moves on, that we go through life and, and you end in death. And this is what happens. And people are born and people die and we live and, and we work and we play and, and we we uh, build and we tear down. All of these things happen. And you know, I think sometimes people have this idea, this uh, maybe it's a, it's a wish, a dream that things would always be great. Things would always be getting better, that they were, that things would always be just improving, but it's just not the way life works, is it? There is good and bad. There's up and down always. This is what happens in life. And, and our willingness to accept that there are things that happen in life help us to then be able to deal with and cope and understand those things in a way that honors God. So this passage really is a great passage is we try to establish what a what a Christian worldview is, how the Christian should look at the world, how we should think about what's going on around us, and then how we adjust to it, how we live in it, how we um, deal with it, how we cope with it, how we go through it emotionally, as well as just the uh, having to um, maneuver our way through life. So understanding that things are going to happen to everyone all the time that things are happening, life is moving on, death is happening. This is a part of the way the world is. Maybe that helps us to get through and understand what's going on, but there's more to this. He says, what does the worker gain from his struggles? I've seen the task that God has given the children of Adam to keep them occupied. He's made everything appropriate in its time. He has also put eternity in their hearts, but no one can discover the work God has done from the beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and enjoy the good life. Okay. One of the things that's important for us here, what does the worker gain from his struggles? And this is a task that God has given the children of Adam, right? That work is a part of how God has designed us. Work came to man before the fall. And that's important to realize that work is a part of God's design for man and how he's created us, that we're made to work, that work is godly, that that is God honoring. It should be God honoring in what we do and how we go about it. And the fact that it's, uh, that it's work, well, that's because it's work. <laughs> you always tell my kids that's, that's why they call it work because it's hard and that's what it happens, right? But I want you to notice that he's, He's done this to keep us occupied. He's made everything appropriate in its time that there are times that we go through life when we're at work. But then this verse here, I really like, he has also put eternity in their hearts. That God has put within every human eternity, this longing for something more, this, this desire to know that there is something beyond us, something bigger than us, something more powerful, something greater, something more valuable than just what's here on this earth. And that is a longing that God has put in our hearts that causes us to seek him, to seek out this eternity and try to understand. And this is, we can't discover this work that God has done. And that's important. We don't, we don't find it. You know, we don't go out and find it, but we know it's there, this longing that's there, right? And, and so we, here we've got this thing that God has designed for us to do, to work and to kind of go through life daily. But in the midst of that, God has put within us 
the thought that there is something more, that this cannot be all there is. So anytime you have that thought, anytime you see someone who begins to wonder that, know that every person that you meet has within them this longing that's there. They have within them this this feeling there must be something more to this. Not everybody recognizes it. Not everybody responds to it. Not everybody seeks what that answer is. And certainly many people seek the wrong answer to that. And some in their frustration, because they can't figure out what it is, they fall into to uh, other kinds of things, other kinds of things that kind of salve the soul, right? That kind of soothe us over so that we don't have to worry about eternity that bothers us. We want it. We can't figure it out. So we find ways to to medicate it, self-medicate it, either by diving deep into work or maybe it's drugs or it's alcohol or it's sex or it's gambling or it's, you know, any kind of other things that that will capture our attention and take us away from the sense that there is eternity that we have within us. And and the truth is, God's the only answer. He's put that God-sized hole within our hearts. It is also the gift of God whenever anyone eats, drinks, and enjoys all his efforts. I know that everything God does will last forever. There is no adding to it or taking from it. God works so that people will be in awe of him. Okay. It's the gift of God that whenever you eat, drink, and enjoy... T- Go back here. The end of this. Nothing better than to rejoice and enjoy the good life that... That God has designed us to enjoy life, okay? That um, that joy, happiness, satisfaction, that's from God. God has made us to enjoy life. Now, we don't always do that well, but we need to know that life is here to, to be enjoyed, okay? And that we need to enjoy every bit of it, you know? Um, you know, the truth is, is that there that those good times pass quickly. They go faster than we think they will. You know, parents, you know this after you've seen your kids grow up and you realize how quickly those moments went, you know, as you watch them uh, go to school and you think about, man, what happened to the first four or five years of life? How quickly they passed by, right? And then the next thing you know, they're graduating high school and you're like, where did all that time go? How quickly it goes. Enjoy it while it is there. God has made us to enjoy it. Okay, this time to, to live in the moment and enjoy the moment, but not live for the moment. Right? Not just because there's eternity, right? Eternity's in our hearts as well, right? And that there are things that God does that are going to last forever. And these are the things that, that put awe in us, okay? You know, most of the work that we do passes, doesn't it? But that work which we do in relationship to God and under subservience to Him, that work that we do that affects humanity, that affects individuals, that that changes the lives of people, that where we're sharing the gospel, where we're helping them know who God is and follow him and walk with him, those things last forever. And that is this work of bringing people to awe, to be in reverence, fear of the Lord, right? God works so that people will be in awe of him. This work that God does, this everything God does will last forever. No adding or taking from it. God works. This work that God does will will bring people to be in awe of him. This is what God wants. This is ultimately all of this work. Enjoy it while it's there. That's why, you know, God designed us to work. But know this, that when we're doing the things that God has designed, at that point then, the work that God has, when we're doing those things, those things last forever. And those are things that bring people to serve, to be in reverence, to be in fear of the Lord, to be in awe of him. And that's the highest work we can attain. Um, that that time when that we're spending trying to get people to know him, that's the highest work that any person can attain. Hey, this is a tough passage, you know, as we dive, dive into the second half, but it's a beautiful passage. Spend some time on the first part of it. Look at the words and the contrast and think about those different uh, things that, you know, a time for life, a time for death, a time for birth, all these things. Look at those things and just be uh, considerate. Consider those things as you study and as you teach this week. Thanks for watching. Hope this has helped. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, share it with others uh, so we can continue to grow. And I appreciate it. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.